Welcome to Math 1560, Introduction to Statistics at King University. This video will just give you an overview of some of the things um, to expect. This course is going to cover chapters 1 through 9 in your textbook. That's a lot of material, so just be ready for that amount of information. The course is set up with a fi in a five-day-a-week model if you're taking this in a five-week class. So each module will have five lessons attached to it. With the design of being you do about a lesson a day, you're welcome to spread that out however you choose. And if you're taking this in a 15-week model, then obviously your time is more spread out. Um, in a traditional five-week statistics class, generally that we teach in the summer, the students are in class two hours every day of the week and, so, and then have additional work on top of that. So if you're taking this in five weeks, you should expect several hours of work every single day spent watching videos, learning the material, taking notes, studying, doing homework, taking tests, things like that. So it is a large time commitment. It's very doable, but it's something that you've really got to commit yourself to. There are rolling due dates throughout each module. This is to prevent that temptation sometimes we have of waiting till the last minute to do all the assignments. Research, research shows that in mathematics, it's very important to learn information in smaller doses so that your brain has time to comprehend the material and build on itself. So rather than everything being due at once, each lesson will have a different due date for the assignments involved in that lesson. They'll be scattered through the week. Just make sure before you start a module, scan down and check to see when everything is due so you can budget your time. Within each module, there are additional resources posted at the end. You have some, um, the PowerPoints that came with your book are available there, as well as some additional articles. Some of those articles will be required of you, and those will be indicated within the lessons. But others are just optional things for you to read, but I invite you to do that. It kind of shows how these things that you're learning are used in real life. There is one graded discussion board assignment every module. I'm just going to remind you in the syllabus, um, the guidelines are that each original post needs to be at least 250 words. Those should be words with substance, not merely filler words. So your grade is going to be reflected with the um, how substantive your answer is. Does it relate back to the article? Are you making pro and con arguments? Um, and as always, use correct grammar and punctuation. You shouldn't be typing in um, chat speak or text speak, so make sure that you make this an academic post. You need to reply to at least two other classmates' posts. Those should be at least 150 words in length, and again, those should be um, with substance and meaningful, although we highly encourage you to use supportive language, like I really liked what you said about XYZ, but just complimenting each other does not make for a meaningful post. We want you in your reply to continue the academic to dis discussion. We want you to make mention of particular posts uh, or particular statements in the original poster's posts. So make this um, a meaningful back and forth academic conversation. And as always, make sure that your, your discussions are civil. We don't want an argument. We don't want um, language that's combative. We just want a healthy academic environment. Every lesson is going to have an assignment attached to it. The assignments are colored. The links are colored gold, so you can recognize those. Anything that you have to submit is colored in gold. You'll click on that gold assignment link, link to be taken to the submission location where you can upload. So a couple ways you can do this. You can do your assignment on paper. Um, if it's a worksheet, you can print that out, complete it on paper. You can scan it, save it as a document on your computer, and then upload that as a PDF or Word file right there in that submission location. Or you can take a picture of your completed work and upload that image. Um, you can always click on the link there that says Type Submission. That will open up a text box, and you can type in your answers if you prefer. Communication is so vitally important in a class like this, particularly because you don't have the benefit of being able to see your instructor face-to-face -face every day. So make sure that you don't hesitate to email your instructor anytime you have a question or concern. Just make sure to allow for 24 hours for a response. That doesn't mean that your particular instructor is going to take that long. It just means you need to allow time um, for that response. So if it's getting close to when something is due, if you're close to the due date and time and you have trouble or, and you might have a question and you email your instructor, please know you may not get a response before that 
um, item is due, and that's not a, a legitimate excuse to turn in a late assignment. There will be late assignment penalties for that. Those are in the syllabus. Um, you have a 10-point per day penalty for every assignment that's turned in late. So keep that in mind when it comes to emailing your instructor. You also have a couple resources to communicate with your classmates. At the bottom of each module, you'll see a link to being able to connect with your classmates. There is a um, discussion board format called Learner Cafe. This is where you can post any questions or comments that you want to address towards your classmates. Uh, and I invite would invite all of you, even if you don't have a question, check there periodically in case one of your classmates has a question that you know the answer to. You will always be able to communicate with your classmates through the discussion boards as well. Uh, there is a link on the left hand side of Blackboard on the left side menu that says discussion board. And if you click that link, you can see all the discussion board forums there with numbers off to the side that kind of let you know when there are some new posts that you have not yet read. So it's a great idea to use that link to keep up with ongoing conversations with your classmates. The more you put into this class, the more you're going to get out. So uh, keep that in mind. And then I'm going to spend a good bit of time right now talking about these instructional videos that are filled throughout the module. Most students, without receiving any other information, would watch each video one time through while they also took notes. I'm suggesting to you that's not even near enough. And the reason is this. In fact, this is the same reason. If you've had trouble in math classes in the past, this might be the reason. When you are in a math class receiving instruction and taking notes, your brain is concentrating on what it is looking at and making sure that what you're writing is the same. And so it's not really comprehending what's being said. It's not in that zone where comprehension occurs. So watch the video the first time while you're taking notes. And it's important to take notes because that aids in memory because you're using your motor skills. The most important thing you can do in this class is to watch every video a second time when you're just listening and soaking in the material. This is when your brain can get into that understanding and that comprehension allowing it to be able to build on previous knowledge. So it's extremely important that you watch those videos a second time. I would also suggest that you watch those videos a third and fourth time when it comes when it comes time to do your practice problems or your homework. The benefit of these videos is that it's like having a private tutor right next to you. So if you're completing a homework problem and you get stuck, you're, the first thing you need to do is go straight to the video that was like that homework problem. Watch that video, particularly watch it at the step where you're currently stuck. stuck. You can rewind that and watch it several times if you're having trouble soaking it in. Um, and then that should be able to get you through the next step of the homework problem. So I would even suggest a great thing to do would be to go ahead and have those videos sort of preloaded on your computer screen, then sit down and work your homework, and you've got those videos kind of ready to go if you need them. Um, so that's my advice. Use those videos, watch them multiple times, and then if you still have a, um, a problem that you can't quite get through and it's a homework assignment, feel free to email your instructor for some help. Just as a warning, this class will never escape you. You will see evidence of what you've learned in this class everywhere around you. In the news, when you read a research article, when you conduct research for other classes, watching sports, shopping, looking at commercials, all of these things are using the concept that we're um, going to learn about in this course. So be prepared to never escape Math 1560 Introduction to Statistics.